Is industrial agriculture really sustainable? Let's look into this a little. Industrial agriculture is characterized by a large-scale monoculture and heavy use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides. By the way, monoculture is planting the same crop in a given area. Commonly used fertilizers include Scott's miracle Grow, Job's, Alaska, Nature's Touch, and Milo Organite. Provide a steady and continuous flow of nutrients as well as allowing plants to hold water with ease, encouraging plant growth. Pesticides such as Roundup, Captain's Jacks, Dead Bug, Eco Smart Garden Safe can eradicate pests that eat the crops which improve the survivability of crops in the long run. As of today, farmers are using chemical fertilizers and pesticides to increase crop production in their farms because it's cheap and easy. These products allow consumers to pay less for these crops because mass production decreases the value of the crop and the food products can be easily distributed to other areas that cannot grow that specific crop. Research has shown that, in Montana, they have no access to oranges because of their cold climates, which prevent farmers from successfully growing oranges. This means that they depend on other states such as Florida, California, Arizona, and Texas to supply them with oranges so they can enjoy them year-long. If we didn't have fertilizers and pesticides, mass production of crops would not be possible and the chance of growing healthy and well-nurtured crops will be significantly less. A survey of U.S. crop production estimated that average corn yields would decline by 40% without nitrogen fertilizer. A long-term study in Missouri found that 50% of the grain yield was attributable to fertilizer and lime additions. These examples show our dependence on chemical fertilizers and pesticides in order to mass produce crops. It may seem like there's nothing wrong with our practice of mass production of crops, but what if I told you that there are byproducts that we are ignoring? Chemical fertilizers can add nutrients to the soil, but they don't add organic matter and support living organisms. After some time, the soil has been depleted from those microorganisms and minerals, which causes the plant to grow without these necessary things, diminishing their quality. Synthetic fertilizers do not support microbiological life in the soil because synthetic fertilizers can kill the microorganisms in the soil, which in turn makes the soil infertile and prevents plant growth. Microorganisms such as soil bacteria convert nitrogen from the air and fix the molecule to create nitrates, which plants can use for their growth. If we kill these microorganisms, then the plant will be unable to receive the necessary nutrients such as nitrates, iron, and phosphorus in order to grow. Without these nutrients, crops will grow abnormally and plant processes such as photosynthesis and cellular respiration will be disrupted. This creates a cycle in which agriculture is always dependent on the addition of fertilizers. A byproduct from the manufacturing of chemical fertilizers is the emission of greenhouse gases. Chemical fertilizers are made from machinery which are powered by fossil fuels. The burning of fossil fuels emit carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas that trap heat in our atmosphere. Carbon dioxide emission will contribute to global warming and possible climate change. Not only do chemical fertilizers affect the soil, but they also affect bodies of water. Chemical runoff of the excess fertilizer can cause harmful effects on lakes, rivers, oceans, and etc. When the fertilizer is introduced to those bodies of water, algae starts to grow. Algae decreases the dissolved oxygen concentration of the water, which causes our seafood to suffocate and die. If we eat seafood that comes from the bodies of water, we will be introducing the chemicals into our bodies, causing various health problems. Pesticides are also part of this problem. When pesticides are sprayed onto the plant, animals can consume the plants with the pesticides on them, which introduces the chemicals into their bodies. We also eat these animals too, so the chemicals will be transferred to us. In 1970, we made DDT illegal because there was proof that the pesticide was being passed on from our crops to our animals and us, causing many health effects such as Alzheimer's and various cancers. DDT was so toxic to the environment and consumers that we have to become more cautious about the kinds of pesticides we are putting in our crops. Continuous use of pesticides will cause microorganisms and pests to develop resistance to the pesticide, which will make the pesticide ineffective towards them if the same pesticide is used over and over. These chemicals from these fertilizers and pesticides can damage our kidneys, lungs, and bones, which can contribute to cancer. Some farmers also breathe on these pesticides while spraying it on plants, which can cause respiratory problems. Uses of chemical fertilizers and pesticides have a long-term effect on the plants, the soil, the environment, and you. Keep in mind that industrialized food and these agricultural systems are not a cost-effective, healthy, or sustainable way to produce the food we need. So what can we do to do better? The global food and agricultural system is broken and we need to fix it. The good news is that we can. 
Some ways we can stop the continuous exploitation of natural land resources and slow down the process of pollution are using organic fertilizers and compost, designing and performing new sustainable practices, and allocating more funds toward agricultural research. In composting, decomposed organic matter provides improved soil fertility and it energizes the soil's food web. The soil's food web is comprised of earthworms, microorganisms, fungi, and more. These organisms provide plants with the necessary components needed for healthy growth. Organic fertilizer works together with compost. The only difference between the two is that compost feeds the soil and organic fertilizer feeds the plant. Research shows that sustainable practices such as cover crops, crop rotations, and organic fertilizers can prevent deprivation of soil and improve the quality of the crops without further damaging the environment. Agroecology is a very good example of sustainable agriculture as a practice of farming that centers on food production while working with nature, not against it. Agroecology uses ecological concepts and principles to design and manage the agricultural system in a way that maintains food productivity while not harming the natural resources. Farmers are using an integrated crop livestock system where they feed residue crops to animals and recycle animal manure to create a sustainable fertilizers for microorganisms in the soil. If we allocate more money into agroecology, then we will see a more sustainable future for us in the next generations. One success story for an agroecological practice getting funded is when a farmer, Keith Burns, was given a grant from the Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education Program. He used the grant from SARE to buy cover crops, allowing him to experiment with his farm. A cover crop is a crop planted primarily to manage soil erosion, soil fertility, soil quality, water, weeds, pests, diseases, biodiversity, and wildlife in the ecosystem. They are used to support the growth of the main crops by adding nutrients to the soil. With these cover crops, Burns noticed a 10% increase in corn yield while using cover crops, which means that if 100 corn was usually made, there would be 110 corn being made in the additional use of the cover crops. If America begins to implement these new agroecological practices, then we will not only be able to feed our growing population with the best fruits and vegetables, but also restore our deprived planet of its natural agricultural resources. Now going back to our question, is industrial agriculture really sustainable? No, it's not. Hi everyone, uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, I just, before I leave, uh, I just wanna give a few shout outs to some people. And so yeah, uh, shout outs to Chris for doing the narration and working really hard on the script. Uh, shout out to Tommy for uh, contributing a whole ton to the research and giving me a bunch of pictures for me to edit. Uh, and also a uh, shout out to Ms. Sabetsky for introducing uh, the po this post AP bio project or post post AP bio exam project because we were introduced this project after the AP bio exam. And yeah, also another thing, um, this is the final uh, video that I'll be making in high school, which means that I am very sad and happy at the same time because um, I will be missing all the crazy times when I made videos in high school. But you know, at the same time, you know, I'm gonna be graduating high school in nine days, which is also a really, really good thing too. Um, and, and yeah, so um, I just, you know, I just wanna say thank you to all of you guys that have been supporting me for uh, all four years of high school. And um, I really hope to experience a good experience in college. So yeah, uh, this is Gino, this is the end of this video, and I'm signing out. Peace.